Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a quick tour of my chicken coop. This past spring, I got four chickens, Rhode Island Reds, and then as they were getting old enough to leave my Rubbermaid tote in the basement with a heat lamp, I started thinking about the chicken coop, and this is what I came up with. I drew a handful of pictures, looked at a lot of Google images, and different websites about chickens, and uh, ended up kind of going with what I normally do on stuff is some sort of little house-ish looking shape with a steep roof. When you kind of look at some of the buildings I'm doing, the sawmill building, the uh, the tiny house that's way over there, I like steep roofs. Um, nothing sits on top of them. I think it just has a dramatic look, It's but it's not in a way that makes them look strange in the landscape. Uh, just has sort of that little varnish or schoolhouse look, and I like that. It's just lapboard siding. All the wood in this whole thing is just scrap wood and leftover materials from projects, stuff from the sawmill that wouldn't have gotten used for anything else. And uh, the only new materials would be the chicken wire and some of the screws and nails that I used. The chicken wire was, I think, $36 for the roll, and then a couple more dollars, probably three or four dollars for the hardware that was used in this. So I'd say I have $50 or less in the project and then I built it over a couple weeks with the majority of the work being done in one or two days. And then I just kind of worked on it here or there over the uh, course of a couple weeks. Even the paint was something that I didn't pay for. It was just some buckets of paint that I got that was left over from someone else's project that they gave me. Um, but I, had, I really like the look of it. To me, it's in keeping with the area I live, the landscape. It doesn't look like something that was just put here. Um, I think it will age out nicely. Uh, yeah, so it suits me. You just have to figure out what suits you. So it's four by six feet. Uh, then it's got this four by four foot covered area. So they're protected from the sun, the rain, whatever. Um, I leave the little door open at nighttime that you see in there. And I close this big door so in the morning they can come out into this little enclosed area and not have to wait for me to get up to let them out. Um, even then, they get pretty impatient by the time I get outside because they are up at the crack of dawn. Uh, Rhode Island Reds, I think, are really good chickens for children. They're not aggressive at all. Talking about the hens, I don't know what the roosters would be like. I'm not a fan of roosters around children at all. I think they can be very dangerous. So that's the back. We'll go in there in a second. I got a light set up for the video. There's the side with the nesting boxes. So you can see the whole thing's raised up. I think it has multiple benefits. Airflow, place for the chickens to go. Even this hardware, all this stuff is all secondhand. I ended up with a bunch of stuff at once though. I wouldn't uh, waste time going around looking for secondhand stuff specifically for the chicken coop, but if you keep an eye out for stuff like this all the time, you end up running into a lot of cool stuff. So again, four by six foot interior with the addition of the nesting boxes, six of them. They're one foot, uh, one cubic foot each. Um, that OSB would be the only like, uh, say man-made material. All the other stuff is just sawn. And the two by fours you see on the inside, that came from a, like a 12 foot long pallet that I got a piece of equipment came on. Um, so the way this was all built, it is a two by six floor system decked with one by sixes. Walls were framed, roof was built, and then this siding, which it's pretty pretty thin siding. It's poplar, uh, and you can just see it live edge on it. Was just where I was skimming off the sides of logs, getting them squared up. Uh, roosting bars. That first one's like 16 to 18 inches, and then that top one is uh, about three feet. And that's pretty much it. Two by six rafters joined with plywood, little gussets, and I just um, roofing nailed that together. The floor, I put down the vinyl flooring in here. It's not attached, it's just laid in there. And that way, whenever it gets real nasty in here, I just pull that out, fold it up like a taco, and then go dump it in the woods and put it right back in there. It's nice because I can just take all of the straw from the boxes and just, just pull it all out. It can all go on here. And then I just take it all out at once. And every once in a while I get in there and I blow it out real good with the leaf blower and then pressure wash the entire interior. All the wood surfaces, I just go ahead and pressure wash it all off and it looks brand new afterwards. Um, 
feed our water, go right inside the door. You can see they have just today finished their food up. I keep them well fed. Plus they roam around eating all kinds of stuff, get all kinds of table scraps that they really like. Um, this is my special chicken right here. She's different than all the rest. They all kind of stick together and this one kind of wanders all around. But I don't think that is pretty much it. Uh, the only other plans that I have is I'm probably going to put something here, maybe a piece of glass or maybe some sort of little like hinged piece of glass and then a piece of screen. You know, something like a raccoon could go up of this house and go in that door and kill him. Um, you can see this loose wire right here. The wire is going to go down and then go under the ground a little bit. I still need to bury that. And then the only other thing that I think I probably will end up doing to this is I think I'm going to pull the siding off of this and change this to where you can access the nesting boxes from the outside. Um, I originally was gonna make it to where this hinged up, but I just thought that complicated it in a way I didn't like. So I may do something like add some doors here. Um, it's no big deal to go in there, but the only issue is, is I have children. So when you send them in there, if there's bunches of uh, chicken poop in here, I mean, they can really pile up quick too. Um, they can kind of get all mixed up in that. And I have small children. And that's the main reason I got these chickens was for them to have something to take care of, sort of some responsibility, and also a pet. They get a kick out of it. Um, just having these chickens, the children are convinced we have a farm, even though we're just people who didn't know anything about chickens and bought some chickens. Got them at Tractor Supply, got the feeder, the water from Tractor Supply. I don't have any previous experience owning chickens before then. I had friends that had them when I was growing up but I've never had them. My uh, aunt had them and she lives very close to me. So, I mean, I've been around stuff, but I've never had them. I didn't know how much work it would actually be to have chickens. Um, you get people, when you look at stuff online, that are obsessed with their chickens and I think can go too far with how much they fool with them. And then you've got people who probably have chickens and take care of them very poorly. I find that you have to be around for them, but chickens are kind of like cats but less work than a cat. I mean, you pretty much keep some food in here, keep some water in here, and then in the morning I open that door. Throughout the day, they're on their own. If something gets them, something gets them. But for the most part, someone's around, and that keeps a lot of stuff that would get them from not getting them. This one right here, which is my special chicken, uh, she, um, she almost got herself killed by a hawk. She wanders off and one dive bombed her, hit her pretty hard, knocked a bunch of feathers out of her. She was bleeding from her comb a little bit, from her legs, but she survived to be weird for another day. She does a lot of funny stuff, wanders way off on her own. At nighttime, when I come in here, the three chickens are up here on the roosting bar. She's always in this box. I shine the light and she hops out and makes her way up there. It's because she's slow getting in and chickens can't see good at night. So once they come in this thing, if it's dark, they really can't hop up there. So all it takes is me shine my light in here, or sometimes I just go in there and grab her and put her up on the roosting bar. Letting them sleep in the roost, uh, in the nesting boxes, they just end up pooping in there. Um, but yeah, get this while I'm in here. That was not staged. It was a cold one though. It's been in there for a while. Sometimes I'll just be outside. So my sawmill building is right there. I'll be over there working and I'll just hear one of these chickens just cut loose, screaming and squawking. And then right after that happens, usually one will just walk out. And if I come right over here right then, there'll be a, an egg that is hot or it just got laid. Um, and it's usually a big egg uh, when that happens. And I don't know if it is squawking because it hurt or if it's squawking just because it's just all excited. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'll give you one more shot of the front. Need to get them some food. So the food that I'm buying... I think it's $20 for a 50 pound bag. And that's just at some little local hardware store that I've got that I can buy it at easy. Um, you can buy larger quantities by the pound probably. Uh, but even that's cheaper than the tractor supply food was, I believe. I think that was like $24 a bag. I think in the wintertime, they'll rely on the food more. In the summertime, they really don't go through that much food because they're walking around eating grass and bugs and they just they do this all day long they basically live to eat so thank you all for watching